After all, what does heart attack pain feel like? In today's video, I'm going to explain to you what the famous pain of a heart attack feels like. Before I start, I'd like to ask you all to subscribe to my channel, leave a like here, activate the bell, subscribe. This is very important to help me here on YouTube, for YouTube to present this video to more people, for us to be able to inform more people, for us to be able to help more people, okay? It's also a recognition of my work, so I appreciate it if you can share and subscribe, and remember to activate the little bell too, because I'm going to bring you lives, I'm going to bring you interviews with colleagues, and I'm always going to bring you content here. So in today's video, I'm going to answer a question, doctor. What is the pain of a heart attack like? This is a very common doubt, because the pain of a heart attack is a very mystified pain. So it seems that that pain, just that pain in the book, that pain in the movie, when the character appears clutching his chest in a cold sweat, vomiting, fainting, that's the most typical pain. It's a more typical pain, but there are many other types of pain that could be suggesting that this patient is having a heart attack. So before you start, what does infarction mean? Infarction is the death of the heart muscle. So basically it's when we have an interruption in the blood flow to that part of the heart and that muscle without the supply of oxygen, without the supply of nutrients dies. So when the muscle dies, we have a heart attack. This infarction can be small, it can be more extensive, it can have serious acute consequences such as cardiac arrest or not necessarily have such serious consequences, right? Anyway, I'll bring this up later. I'm going to explain today what the type of heart attack pain is. So what is the type of heart attack pain? The pain of a heart attack can be a squeezing pain, a heaviness, patients say, it feels like there's something sitting on their chest. Yes, it can be a throbbing pain. It can be a pain that feels like there's a needle, a stab in the chest. It can be a burning pain, which is sometimes confused with reflux pain. It can be a pain in which the patient says, doctor, I feel discomfort in my chest, but he can't tell me or describe the pain very well, can he? He knows he's having chest discomfort, he knows he's having some anguish, he knows he's having some... He doesn't know if it's burning, if it's tightness, if it's something new. So the type of pain is going to draw a lot of attention from the cardiologist when we have the patient in front of us, when we question him, interrogate him about this pain. The typical pain, this squeezing pain, that there's something weighing on the chest, it draws a lot of attention, so much so that it has a classic description in the literature. But here's an alarm for you. Whenever you feel a pain in your chest, whether it's a new chest pain, a chest pain you've never had before, a chest pain that makes you sit down, stop exercising, stop what you're doing, always paying attention, right? So here's your first warning. All chest pain can be potentially serious. There are, aren't there? There is literature, a type of pain that has a higher percentage of being caused by a heart attack. A pain that has a lower percentage of being caused. Less chance of being secondary to a heart attack. But here, patient, that's what I always say. The patient isn't obliged to know which pain they need to be worried about. No, this pain here doesn't worry me. This pain here seems to be more worrying. So it's the cardiologist who's going to say whether it's a concern or not, okay? So I've talked about type, I'm going to talk about location. The pain doesn't necessarily have to be in the chest, okay? It doesn't have to be on the left, it can be on the right, it can be in the middle of the chest, it can be here in the abdomen, here in the stomach, it can be here in the neck, it can be here in the jaw. So all the pain that happens from here, even the umbilical scar for us can be caused by the heart attack. This pain can radiate, in other words, it can run down the left arm, it can run down the right arm, it can run down the back, it can run up to the top of the head. So for example, there are patients who think they have a toothache and it could actually be a heart attack, right? Obviously people, I'm not trying to alarm you, but what I'm trying to say is that very strong jaw pain, a tightness can be secondary, it can be a pain suggestive of a heart attack. So I've talked about type, 
I've talked about location. Now I'm going to talk about associated symptoms. Associated symptoms are very important. Why is this? Because a heart attack usually comes with some associated symptom. When I say usually, it's because there are also many cases in which completely atypical symptoms can occur. In other words, there's none of what I'm telling you here. It doesn't seem to follow any of these paths, okay? But basically, the patient will usually have a disproportionate cold sweat. So, well, I'm working there and all of a sudden my chest starts to hurt. I start to break out in a cold sweat, okay? So this draws a lot of attention, what we call diaphoresis, cold sweats, okay? Nausea, a patient who feels very nauseous and vomits together with intense chest pain also attracts attention. Patients who start to feel dizzy along with chest pain will attract attention. Patients who feel faint or even pass out are also a cause for concern. The patient who can sometimes also have diarrhea at the same time as the pain from the heart attack, which are the autonomic symptoms we talk about. This patient may also have a headache. So headaches are often associated. Sometimes the patient goes to the neurologist for a headache and this headache is associated with angina, which is chest pain. Secondary to obstruction of the arteries, right? Other associated symptoms, guys, a drop in pressure, right? So if the pressure drops, that can draw a lot of attention, but the pressure can also rise. So if these patients have very high blood pressure, we have to quickly give them medication in the emergency room, for example. Why is that? Because very high blood pressure will damage the heart attack even more. It can increase the extent of the heart attack. It can also be accompanied by a stroke. So sometimes a patient arrives at the emergency room with a stroke and they're actually having a heart attack at the same time, right? So they arrive with a stroke and they're both having a heart attack at the same time. Basically, I want to leave you with a message, okay? That pain, what is a tongue pain, a typical pain? That tight, heavy, burning pain that radiates down the neck, radiates down the arms, makes you nauseous, makes you want to vomit, makes you feel faint, the patient turns pale, sweats, feels very unwell. But there are many cases of atypical pain, especially in women, especially in the elderly, especially in patients with diabetes. So these patients may just have pain in the pit of their stomach. Sometimes it can be just a pain in the arm. Sometimes they may just have a pain in the neck, in the back, here in the jaw. Sometimes that patient might just be a very old patient, for example, and start vomiting copiously. Elderly patients stop eating, for example, they may have angina, they may have symptoms of a heart attack. Sometimes the elderly patient starts to get more confused. Sometimes they may also have something wrong with their heart. So remember, here's my final message to you. Any symptoms that are different from the usual ones should be asked of your doctor. The doctor has to know what's going on. So remember that heart attacks, chest pains and angina are very common diseases, unfortunately. They cause a lot of mortality, they cause a lot of sequelae. So, whenever you obviously keep your exams up to date, have regular checkups with your doctors, know your test results, maintain regular physical activity, don't smoke, don't drink too much, maintain the right weight, all that stuff I always tell you about. So I hope I've helped you share this video, leave a like, subscribe to my channel, activate the bell here, watch the other videos on the channel. There are other videos on heart attacks on other topics. Thanks for following me here and see you next time.